Thanks, Thomas Earl of Lancaster. Sul Sul, hello, and Lavas. Welcome to another episode of the Pain Family Ultimate Decades Challenge. Today, I am being a little bit cheaty because technically the Kingly visit is happening this year, but I have decided that what I'm going to do is push it off for a day, and so we've now got... <laughs> So we've currently got all of this stuff for sale. The shop is open and I am trying to sell it today. Basically, if we can sell something today, then I'm going to count it as ours. And if we cannot, then, um, well, then we can't, you know what I mean? Uh, buddy, go ahead and, yep, you can like cooking, sure. Dovile, you are on serious honey pressing duty. As for you, what are you cooking? Because you should be baking. Yeah, baking. Dovile is out here pressing honey like her life depends on it. And okay, I guess not. Well, I will take advantage of that. It's in the game, so it's not really cheating. And we're really having trouble getting the honeys that we need to be able to produce some of these other meads. So, yep, that's where we are right now. Huxley has been up all night baking. Uh, the baked goods have been flying off the shelf literally. As soon as I put them down, they're getting sold. Oh, hey, Oakley. Um, so we'll see if that continues. Dovile is going through a mean streak. She keeps wanting to be mean to people. Go ahead and use the bathroom, kiddo. I have had Sif and Huxley woohoo again. I'm really hoping that we're going to be able to create a baby for them, although this place setting is stuck. One second. Oh, I forgot that we had these things. I wonder if we can sell these. That's right. I'm not against doing the old cheaty cheaty. If you count that as cheating, it kind of is. I mean, can we set that for a sale? <laughs> I want to make some ser- no, we can't. I do want to make some serious- okay, you hold on to these things for now, if you don't mind. Nope, Sif, I'm afraid you cannot. You can take an angry poop though, congrats. Press some more honey, kiddo. Yes, finally, dang. It has taken us forever to get to this point. It's because we have so many things, but we don't have- the right ones. Like, look at all the honeys we have. We've got all of these different ones, but I don't think that he's powerful enough yet to be able to do them in terms of his mead making skills. You go ahead and take a bath. Sif, I know you're trying to go make food, and I'm afraid that's not gonna happen, kid. You can uh, shave your leg head, though. Leg, <laughs> leg head. Leg hair. Um, there are not so many historical events this year. But what I've decided is that I think the Great Famine, of course, it's still going on. So I think it's probably intensified quite a lot this year. And so I feel like that means that there's no real point. I feel like that means that basically, you know, the roles are going to be much harder than they originally were. So... We aren't going to end up traveling today, I don't think, but once we travel tomorrow, we'll see what that means and how that plays out in the end. <laughs> oh, yeah, light that. Fill in bottles. We're really trying to make some cashiola. Sif, no, what are you making? Oh my gosh. She's going to have her one meal for today, like right now. I can just tell. Sif, oh my gosh. Okay, Sif, you made it, so you're eating it. Now, I do think that, just to address it, I do think that everyone's very concerned about Gree. It's just that that's not currently my main concern right now. My main concern is uh, basically selling everything that we can before we have to give it away um, tomorrow. 
Come on, guys. Don't you want to buy something? Hello? Got a lot of stuff here. Doesn't it look very delicious? Thank you, Roger Mortimer. Oh, it's already 7 p.m. Today has just flown by, so I guess it's going to be whatever it's going to be at this point. Um, I'll get to about midnight and then imagine that the Earl rode over to be like, the king is coming and we need your stuff, so. So hand it over. Are you knitting? You're a nice person, Seth. You have two, Huxley. Oh, since Huxley aged up, here he is. He has gone a bit gray. He also has some like smile lines. Um, I don't know what he's doing right now. Just kind of hanging out. Actually, that's a good point. You found some harvestables. Can you please give those to him? We might be able to make something with that. I'm not sure, but we might be able to. Oh, also, you may have noticed that the sheds have been disappearing. I kind of feel like during the two years that the famine went on, I guess it was really three years because it's 1315 to 1317. I kind of feel like during the three years that the famine went on, of course, the things that had held the animals would have started to like break down. So I've just been uh, destroying them and calling it good. Okay, so we ended up making about 21,303 in profits, which means that we owe 4,261 in taxes, unless I'm very much mistaken, which means that we're going to be left with 4, 4, 49,759. So we've got that money now. But what's crazy is I was looking at this, at the things we had for sale. We have a bottle of nectar that's worth 7,470 simoleons. And another one that's worth another 1500 So we're about to lose a ton of money. Uh, and I'll share with you at the end how much we're going to end up losing because of this. So we could have made, potentially, if we'd have just sold everything, 35,239 simoleons. What this says to me is that so long as we get lucky with our Talix years, and so long as we don't have too many sims that we have to, you know, pay a dowry for, then we should be just fine with eventually getting out of serfdom, um, so long as our taxes stay at 20%. But there is a time that that can change, but we'll get to that when it happens. Today's already our hunting day, but because we had to give up all of our food, um, we also get to go hunting twice. But the famine travel rules have really escalated, so it's a lot more dangerous to travel now than it originally was. And so I'm a little bit scared, but let's see what's going to happen when we go out hunting. And like I mentioned the other day, I think that we're only going to do the famine travel rules once per day, per sim day. So we'll do that once for the family today, see what happens, send them out to hopefully get some food. Maybe Seth goes out to forage. Maybe the girls go to the shop because we need to buy some stuff probably. And then, gosh, it's terrible weather. It would be perfect for getting ambushed today, you know what I mean? I figure that everyone's more desperate due to the famine the second this year because it's been going on for a while. So rather than doing um, the roll that we had last time out of a D8, this is actually going to be a coin flip. Heads is going to be getting attacked. Tails is going to be getting money stolen. So either way, something is going to happen that's not going to be ideal. So anyways, okay, so let's see what their destiny is going to be. First one doesn't count, of course. So, okay, we've gotten attacked. Ooh, this is bad because when you get attacked, there are four possibilities. So we have four Sims and the four of them are going to roll together. So if we roll a D4, one means that they escape. Two means that somebody got injured. Three means that somebody got kidnapped. And four means somebody got moidoid. You know, they got axed during the whole 
attack. So what is the fate of our little group? Somebody got murdered? Oh my gosh. Okay. So one of these four is going to get axed today. <laughs> I'm scared to look. I don't know which one it's going to be. <gasps> the heck? I've never seen that before. How interesting. What is happening? Oh, you too? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Ah! What? What is happening here? You've done this to us. Huxley, no. Okay, well, Huxley has rolled badly. Maybe we'll be able to save him again. Maybe. You, run out here. Run out here, Aidas. Aidas, run out here. Aidas, <gasps> run. Hurry, hurry! Everyone else is in too good of a mood, and I've noticed that there's a correlation between these things. Come on, Aidas. Well, don't step on his body, kid. <gasps> no way! Grim just granted it again. Everyone's right. I don't know what kind of a soft spot Grim has for this family, but he clearly has some kind of a soft spot because this is twice that Huxley has been saved. We are super lucky, uh, the luckiest family, and I don't know why Grim has a soft spot for us, but I will take it. Why don't you go do a celebratory woohoo with your wifey? Why don't you come over here and, I don't know, like, uh, take a shower and uh, apply f facial cleanser? Um, you guys, yeah, hang out or whatever you want to do. Sure, you can talk, sh walk, uh, talk to this dog coyote thing. Why don't you say hi to Grim? Oh, so we get to flip and see if the king is going to grant us with his presence. So let's see. Roll a d4. If it lands on a 2, we get to meet the royal family. First one doesn't count. Oh my gosh, we get to meet the royal family. Heck yeah, we do. And I'm gonna say, since the king knows that he and Gree have had a thing going on, we actually are just gonna get that money straight away. So, you know, that's kind of how I feel, is that we just get it, because he knows, he knows what's going on. Okay, so, the king is here, and I think they're going to have a little bit of a talk. The king's been here before, like, in case anybody's forgot, I mean, who would have forgotten? It was kind of the biggest moment so far, I feel like, the last time the king was here. But the king is here, and I think that he is here, obviously, paying us a visit during this time. He's going to give us some money. He knows that Gree has done some extra things for him. But I think that Edward is probably asking... Oh, where are you going, pal? I think that Edward is probably now also asking where Gree is. He is probably a little bit concerned. I don't feel like he wants anything bad. Whoa! I didn't plan this, but Lancaster is now suddenly here as well, inside of our home at the same time as Edward. But yeah, look at the way that Lancaster's looking at Edward talking to Huxley, asking about Gree. Ooh, this is kind of awkward. Awkward and suspicious. And so it looks like here Edward is being like, oh, here is the money that I will give to you for being the 
you know, randomly chosen surf family, all while Lancaster is watching over. Huxley doesn't seem to appreciate it, because I bet he recognizes that this means Lancaster's probably going to be a little bit suspicious of them. Yeah, this is the most awkward uh, kingly visit ever. This is not what I was expecting when I imagined a kingly visit. Ooh, and it looks like Edward is now yelling at Huxley, who doesn't seem impressed. And I think that he might be yelling about Gree and where she is. Because Edward, I think, knows that she was feeling a little bit sickly. And perhaps her not, the knight that was supposed to escort her, maybe he's alive. And he even mentioned that she'd been puking all over the place. And Edward has a child. He has several children at this point. And so I think he knows that when a woman you've woohooed with is puking all over the place that that might mean a certain thing and he wants to know and not only that but also Gree was supposed to be working for him and she has what he perceives to be valuable intel although I think that's questionable that he wanted to receive from her and so oh Edward Posen and so he's really worried about where she is as well and so the family is already worried about her and where she is and now we've got these guys in here Lancaster and Edward the both of them in here questioning where is your sister we need to talk to her and honestly I don't really know where this is gonna go uh oh oh that was kind of a nice interaction for them maybe pretense I don't know well, yeah, and then they chose to sit this way. Hmm. Anyways, I don't really know what's happening with this family right now, except for that Huxley is sleeping. <laughs> I don't really know what they're doing in our home, what it's supposed to mean. I don't understand why these guys are here, but okay, we're going to leave the pain family because we've got to go over and do Jonas's birthday. All right, so here we are back with the Miskinus family, and you might notice that we've got a few new faces here. These are um, Agla's family. So this is Daniela's, her father, and over here is Elsbieta. We've met her before. She's kind of like the homemakery version of Agla. But Danielis is here um, because he wants to help out with his grandchildren. Elsbieta isn't married yet, and she also wants to help out with the children. Um, so they're over here trying to make sure that Agla's family continues on, you know, safely and in good health. So Jonas aged up. He's going to be an inquisitive little guy, and we'll modify him and Cass. Oh, don't do it. I hate dirty nappies. Ask your grandfather. Please, 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 won't you help? Dang, a lot of people sent gifts. All the way to Lithuania? You didn't even know it was his birthday, man. But yeah, we'll go ahead and do his role um, now, and then we'll do modify him and Cass and see how he's going to be once we have survived that. Oh my gosh, is she high maintenance? I bet she is. Doesn't that just fit her? High maintenance and nosy. Well, Vilka seems like he's doing okay right now, but I feel like he might just be putting a brave face over everything because I think the loss of Agla really just like got him, you know? He loved her so much. And I know that because of where they live, anytime that it's sort of like a remembrance day, the ghosts show up and sort of like you can talk to them and hang out with them, and that's really nice, but. Okay, so now that you're a little bit more, okay, now that you're a little bit more, you know, chilled out, not on the potty, let's go ahead and take a look and see if you're going to survive. Okay, so the only thing that Jonas cannot roll is a 4, 8, 12, or a 16. First one doesn't count, so... Oh my gosh, you have to be kidding me. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Come on. Uh, okay, we'll try and plead. Of course, we'll try and plead. Oh my gosh. Okay, buddy, I'm really pulling for you. Please make it through. Please, please, please. My goodness, this is... We are having such bad luck in Lithuania. I knew everything was too good to be true. Is it time? 
Oh my god, no! Oh my gosh, no, 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 no! Go here! Somebody go here! Everyone, go here! Demand! Demand, Vilkas! Come on, Vilkas, you can do this! You can do this! Don't witness it! Just- No! No, 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 no! Oh no, Elspieta, why did you get terrified at the last second? Oh no, oh gosh, oh no, 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 oh my gosh, ugh. <sighs> Agla, tell us what we're doing wrong. What a way to leave, but that's the end of Sunday and the end of the first half of the year. So I will see everyone in the third day of 1317, where we will be back with the Payne family. All right, the Sims are awake and unhappy, but what's new? <laughs> and, uh... Nope, buddy, there's a bit of a line for the restroom, so you little kids, why don't you... You've all got cross-stitches to work on, I believe. Yep, go ahead and use your your cross-stitches for now. Sorry, kid, you're gonna have to wait. It's not your turn yet. So we're getting pretty close to finding out who's going to be the ones who do not make it through, um, which is kind of scary, um, not gonna lie. But what can we do? What can we do? I don't really want us eating our food this early in the morning because Sif, you'd better not be Sif. Sif, no. How did we just spend 130 simoleons? Who? <gasps> Sif. Okay, you can resume it, but that's a terrible meal. If you have ye old cookbook and you're doing the famine and you don't know this, any of the pies do not fill up their um, food. They don't fill up their hunger as much. Rahul, why are you constantly coming in here? You're not part of the story, my friend. Like, it's not that I don't want you to be, it's that you just aren't. Like, get out of here. Golly. Okay, we'll go ahead and do a little roll and hopefully it doesn't go as dire as last time. But yes, so we have to do a coin flip and if they get a heads, that means they've been attacked and if they get a tails, that means they have money stolen from them. This is for while they go out um, and we're going to be going out several times today. So I think it's kind of important that we, you know, do this. So let's go ahead and do this little coin flip and see what is what. So the first one doesn't count, of course. Attacked again? I mean, come on. What are the... I guess last year we only got money stolen. Okay, it's just that the attacks are like so much worse this year. Okay, we've got to roll a d4. One means that they escape, two means that somebody gets injured, three means someone gets kidnapped, and four means that someone's not going to make it. So, come on! Oh, they escaped, so nothing bad happened. Okay. Oh, after I was like, if Huxley gets God again, I just don't know. Oof, okay. Well, great. Love that for us. Now you two are just chatting. I actually need, can somebody, is the shop open? No, because it's Sunday. Dang it. Um, all of you adult humans who can, you're going to go foraging, okay? I really appreciate your help. And today is Sunday in the game, so I think that they're probably getting pretty desperate, and I feel like they are going to go to church today as well. <gasps> Ooh, everyone, Gree has gone into labor. This is not a drill. She is in labor, so we are about to find out where she is and what is going on with her. So I will see you when we get to where she is.